Hello and welcome to another one of our videos where today we'll be discussing the uh, role of pain and well uh, sometimes it's actually a necessary thing so um, this is when I'm talking with uh, injury rehabilitation so, um, so firstly what is pain well well we all know what pain is and the pain I'm talking about in this video is more the chronic pain so not so much the uh, uh, traumatic pain that you would say from a car accident or a collision something that was out of your control and was an incident that caused it I'm, I'm more or less talking about the type of pain from that has evolved from what most people think is nothing but really it was a, a combination of poor posture poor movement habits poor function um, and just their neglect over time has led them to a problem that they now I'm not sure why it's there so so usually when we have pain our approach to treating it is like it's a real inconvenience and you know and that we just want to get rid of it um, and you know by using a pill or a tablet maybe even medical intervention like surgery you know do we just want, want it to go away um, but I, we must understand when it's there it's it's already already before you felt that it was there it was already beginning to um, set in place a chain reaction of things that are now going to change how you move forever meaning that unless you identify that you're always going to be stuck in pain so an example of how quick pain can change how you move is an example of if you sprained your ankle you automatically will change how you walk you will change it really fast um, your body will have to compensate to overcome that that problem and that will now set off a chain reaction to problems at other joints that didn't have anything wrong with them of the weird way that you're now going to move so that this is this very important to understand this so because I see so many people just want to get rid of their pain but not really getting rid of their problem all right so so treating symptoms so using pills surgery um, to treat a chronic condition is never a good solution all it really does is just turn off the fire alarm the thing that's warning you of something that's a bigger problem that you need to address your, your job is to find what that problem is and not just treat the symptoms um, You'll always find the solution will be come back to moving to learn, learn more efficiently. So, uh, you know, lately I've had a lot of people say to me, look, magnesium makes all their problems go away. Well, uh, I highly doubt that in all, in all the cases that they've said that to me, that these people were moving very, very poorly. Um, and, and for years they were relying on magnesium to treat their, their symptoms of pain, but hence that's why I'd you know, I don't need a magnesium supplement and I'm perfectly fine and as are many other people so it's a, this is a you know again or it's a it's a great thing to do but it's not really addressing the real problem all right so now when we talk about pain there's always a fear of more pain so and and that's a really important fear to have and, and it's a good thing in some regards because it stops you from doing stupid things so the person who ignores that is the person who uses the no pain, no gain approach and that person, as I'll show you soon, will create even more problems. So, um, But you must understand that the thing that is going to solve your long-term problem is, is really exercise or learning to move better. But at the same time, the same thing that will get rid of your problem forever is also the same one in the short term that could potentially make it a lot worse. So a perfect example here is the deadlift. Um, which we see with bulging disc problems all the time um, in the real world this is just called bending over in the gym we call it the deadlift but, but really bending over in the real world you cannot avoid is, is always going to be there it's how you're going to tie your shoes up how you're going to brush your teeth how you're going to put something you get something out of the cupboard you're going to put your socks on you're doing it all the time so you, you need to understand that you're, you either you're doing it poorly as in this case or you're doing it really well um, if you're doing it poorly, inevitably you're going to always stay in pain no matter how much uh, and you can get surgery and that will still give you gr trouble if you continue to bend that way if that's all you know. All right. So, um, But understand that when we see someone who's bending poorly and they have this extreme pain, we actually have to teach them how to bend, meaning there's a high risk uh, because they potentially from what they're seeing us to help them could make them a lot worse. All right, so um, you just need to have a plan and a process on how to uh, avoid that risk, all right, which we'll go over into it in shortly. So, so most people's response is to avoid pain. So as I said, it's sort of normal to avoid pain and it's a good thing initially to let inflammation settle. But 
there is a certain amount of pain necessary to actually get you to where you want to be long term. So um, the, the key in understanding this is knowing what's good pain and what's bad pain, finding the right amount, the right amount of balance between experiencing good pain um, and also improving movement quality. Always understand that the body will prefer to continue compensating and keep the dysfunction as in place because that's its protective mechanism to just basically prevent any further problems. But in the short term, it, it, it does an okay job at that, but long term, as anyone who's in this situation will know, it, it, it starts to become a big, bigger problem and the body will just continue to hold on to um, really stiffness to protect joints from further pain, but that creates other problems instead. All right, so firstly, let's understand what's good pain versus bad pain. This is sort of can be a very gray area. So um, usually good pain is gonna be associated with DOMS, which is general muscle soreness from doing exercises, so like a single leg squat here, or any exercise for that matter, a simple one to a hard one, doesn't matter. If it's done well, muscles will be fatigued. There'll be microscopic, um, fiber damage that creates a, a strength of effect that makes the muscle stronger over a period of 48 hours. Um, but even like things like stretching, and here's a picture of me after I'd uh, torn my ACL and I had to get full, my knee back to full extension and flexion. And this was very painful to do, but absolutely necessary. If I didn't do this in the early stages, I would lose this um, my ability to extend my knee fully forever the scar tissue would build up around there. And this is, I see this all the time with ACL injuries. All right, so this is a very, very important and ex a really great example of where pain was absolutely necessary to provide what I needed to do um, long term. Um, in terms of shoulders, trigger point release or, around there, this can be extremely painful, but again, absolutely necessary. Um, usually the good pain dissipates after a few days. Um, it doesn't hang around, doesn't keep you awake at night and all that sort of stuff. Um, bad pain is very much like pain in the joint. So it's not muscular, it's very much joint or it's even nerve pain. Something that's very acute signals can affect sleep, can bring headaches, will really affect even the simplest of tasks. That's, that's the pain that you don't want. But you do need some of this pain to be able to get rid of that pain. All right, so you just need to, as I said, it can be a gray area, but you do need some good pain. And as we'll see shortly, beginners tend to avoid this. Um, so as we just mentioned, good pain will need to get rid of it. Another example will be here to strengthen the glutes to stabilize the hip. So in the case here, muscle fatigue is very likely, but absolutely necessary. So chance of bad pain coming from this though can be, is always a potential risk. So. Here's a clam exercise to strengthen the glutes, very simple. Uh, hip extension, another simple one, and this is a much more integrated, uh, much more difficult one. There's a good chance in this one that the pain could come about, even in this one, to be honest. But um, So you need to have a really good plan to work out, okay, where do I need to start? How much do I need to do? So I just get the right amount of good pain to strengthen things so that the bad pain doesn't come back. All right, so we'll touch on that again shortly. Um, so finding the, bal the balance, right, so this is the second thing, so we know what good and bad pain is. Delicate process will vary a lot from person to person. Um, as we've mentioned a few times, too much of the good pain just gives you bad pain, but not enough good pain will also give you bad pain. So um, let's get, explain this in a bit more detail. So I've got this, um, I got this idea from Dan Pope, you can look up his stuff on me. Stuff he has a lot of great stuff on his website, um, and I really loved how he used this. Um, this sort of graph, it really gives, gives a good visual to explain something that can be complicated. So I didn't come up with this idea, this is his, all right? So, so basically this is someone who doesn't have pain, right? So their pain-free movement sort of incorporates sitting, walking, stairs, gardening. This is, I'm sort of using the example of back pain here with this one. So, um, all right, so all these things are pain-free at the moment. So the painful movement would be something that would move above beyond a deadlift, maybe like Olympic lifting might bring on some painful movement. But if they don't do that, and most people don't, they usually can get along with things quite fine. Um, however, after the pain sets in, a lot of the things that require bending and or even moving quickly now promote a pain signal. Uh, the sitting one here was, was at the bottom, I sort of moved it up because this one actually can move into the painful movement. So um, 
you know, and that, that's that's actually in many cases a cause of the problems, but you can see how now the painful threshold has really <laughs> diminished quite quickly. Uh, and there's, now there's a lot of things that are going to hurt you, and these are just life things. A lot of these is bending in real life that's sitting on a chair that's just walking upstairs perhaps. Um, all right, so there's a lot of things here that can, can be greatly affected. So now if we mention good pain will help us get out of it. Um, so if I don't have enough good pain to take me over into the realm where there's a pain threshold response that will strengthen things, I don't actually improve at all. If, you know, a person will sort of stay around here. And this is, as I said, beginners are very, people aren't familiar with exercise, never done gym work before. And I get a lot of people who've seen these videos and, see, and, and it makes sense to them, but they've never done exercise before. And we get them doing stuff and they, they sort of get confused between a muscle soreness and a bad pain. All right, so um, and and I and it's completely understandable, um, and we have to sort of like and it's hard for us to determine what what they're describing to us if it's good or bad at times because um, and the only way to know this is to see if they if they're still able to move okay um, and and are slightly improving on the skills that we're teaching them if they're deteriorating and coming in limping and all sorts of stuff we know that. The, the pain threshold has been exceeded too far. All right, so so too much pain is this is the example of too much pain. So this is common with the person who's a gym junkie who overdo exercise. Maybe that's why they created their problem from too much exercise in the first place, uh, and usually ignorant to movement quality. All right, so they're, they're sort of going too far into the into the good pain and now turning it into bad pain. This person also doesn't improve. Um, with their chronic condition that they may have, right? They're just too much, uh, and the, the, their pain threshold stales still remains high. So when we get it just right, what we sort of begin to see is that the the line changes. So we have just a small amount of good pain, sort of our our recovery work on skills and stability, mobility. So anything below there is where you're working the mobility. So if I, if I go back to this one. This is where people are working with therapists who are just doing stretches only. Um, and that's good to do, but if because there's no actual pain that's requiring strength, there's no real long-term gain. All right, so when we're in this phase, this is where we start to mobility, you know, tissue release, stretching, you know, that generally reduces the pain but doesn't change things. That Then we be go into there into the exercise realm and we change things. So if we go there for too long, as we saw in this one, that's not a good thing. So just finding the right amount to be there is what gives us that gradual and we change the line and it starts to go up and up and up and now you're back to where you, where you were back here. All right? um, and that's what, that's what you want to do. But the only way to do it is to use exercise to have some good pain to get rid of bad pain. All right, so the last um, point was the movement quality. You just can't ignore movement quality. You know, um, this really just puts it all together. So, for every tight overworking muscle that you're trying to release, there's an opposing weak and lazy one, and this must be strengthened. So, as we've mentioned before, people rely solely on releasing stiffness and trying to reduce inflammation, but really neglecting the the fact that there's a there's a weak and lazy muscle that's a, that's still at large that hasn't been addressed yet. Um, so, without the rise in the strength of this muscle or group of muscles and also teaching the affected joints that, that you've just maybe loosened how to move with this their new mobility, the body will only resort back to its new stiffness. So an example might be where we we would um, do some tissue release from trigger points, teach the body how to regain some mobility in an area that had lost it, now teach it how to stabilize and, and educate it on the movement pattern and then lastly strengthen it. All right, that's a, that's an example how you would move through a process where, where there's sort of good pain, um, there's no pain here, really no pain here, but the potential for pain is high here, uh, but only if it's done poorly or we, we've skipped these steps too quickly. All right, um, always remember with strengthening your life's requirement. If life's requirement is here, you must sort of be in a gym equivalent of about here. Most people when they're doing traditional training, machine training, they're not really preparing their body for the demands of life, especially if they're doing sports. 
So you must always, this is why you must strengthen and people who are older age, that they're, they're already slipped below this line because of age is just wasting their muscle tissue. So that they're, 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 they now need to exercise to get them back up to the line, back up to zero more or less. All right, so this is a, a great little, another sort of a visual to keep in mind of why strengthening is so important. Um, the last thing you always want to ask is why did you end up in pain in the first place? So when, when you really ask this question, you're sort of like trying to find the source of your problem. So there's a reason you ended up in pain. You must find what it is. And, it, and it's not bad luck and it's not age and it's not gender. It's not genetics. Genetics may have some part to play, but you can't blame it on that. Um, you always got to look for movement dysfunction. So identifying your poor movement and then using, um, you know, smart exercise programming to correct it. So smart exercise program will be following this um, sort of formula of releasing the, the joint restrictions first, working on stabilizing those joints, moving more efficiently, so there's movement skills, strengthening these newfound movement skills, and then making a move at a, an ability that's way, way better than, that, than your previous had before. Um, and if you follow that, and then you're basically sort of roaming through the, these first two are the, where most people are in the pain stage, but they must must get to this stage to hold anything that you've done there together. If you don't do that, you just go back to what you had before. All right. So summary: getting rid of the pain is not the same same thing as getting rid of the problem. Pain is necessary to some degree. You must distinguish, however, between the good and the bad. Always find the balance between small increments of good pain and not go too far into the red as such. Always identify your poor movement strategy and find a way to correct it. And lastly, complete the job. You must apply the strength methods to ensure your body can cope with the demands of life and hold all of your, your changes you've made here back together. All right, so if you have any questions or comments or want more information, there's stacks of stuff that we have on our free reports page and, and a lot of the advanced programs that we have for shoulders, back, ACLs, piriformis syndrome and also knee pain which I did put the picture there but um, yeah all of these things are covered in great detail with videos and books and everything you can download so check it out on our website in the description below the video I'll put a lot of links there to help you out as well. Alright so I hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you on our next video.